In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my simple four step process that I take every single time I analyze a stock and how I actually decide whether I'm going to invest in it or not. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Christos here and welcome back to the channel. Now, when it comes to looking at the stock market, looking at balance sheets, reading profit and loss statements, EPSs, PE ratios and all stuff like that, things can get quite overwhelming, especially if you are a beginner. So what I have decided to do is actually share my own personal four step method that I use when I come to analyzing a stock. Now this method is going to be a lot less kind of analytical and number driven than the typical investor to say, but it's worked for me and I personally think if you are a beginner, it may work for you too. But before we get started, a quick Quick two things that I do need to mention before we get into the details of this video. Number one, I am not a financial expert of any kind. I have zero qualifications. I'm very much a beginner. I've only been investing in the stock market for about four years now. Um, so please do not take anything that I tell you as actual financial advice. This is just me sharing exactly what has worked well for me. So um, that's point number one. Point number two is very much all the things that I'm about to be talking about in this video has been geared towards someone with a long-term strategy. So I look at a long-term strategy of anything 10 years and beyond. So if you are looking at getting into something like day trading or trading stocks over a, let's say, a two or three month period, then the things that I'm gonna be talking about in this video are probably not gonna to be too much help for you. You should go and check out another channel that talks about kind of trading stocks in a short period of time. But now we've got that out of the way, just one more thing. If you do like this channel and do like this kind of content, make sure you smash that like button down below subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and having said that let's get into my four step simple process okay so step number one before I do anything before I even look at the price of the stock the first thing that I have to do is learn everything I possibly can about the company and their management structure. So why is this important? Number one, you need to know about the company that you're investing in. It would be silly just to go in and pick a um, ticker on the stock market and just go, right, I'm gonna invest in that. That's more like gambling and stuff. So um, the first thing that I do is I have to learn everything about the company. So um, for example, let's take Apple. Now I am a massive Apple user. I have an Apple laptop, an iPhone, AirPods, um, and other things as well. I I know everything about their products. I know what their vision is for the future. And this makes a really good sense for me to look more into investing in Apple because I know so much about their company from being a consumer. The second thing that I do in this stage is I start to look at the management company. So a couple of things that I'm looking for in the management company, I need the CEO to be stable. I need them to have a good track record. Once again, going back to Apple um, with Tim Cook, he's an extremely good CEO. He's had a really good track record, especially over the last 10 years since the passing of uh, Steve Jobs. And he just gives me all the confidence that I need in a CEO that is driving a company forward, which then in turn gives me a lot of confidence when it comes to actually investing in the company. And one really good example that I love to use when talking about this to my friends and family is when it comes to comparing Apple and Tesla. Now, Apple and Tesla are two extremely good brands that I absolutely love. I love the Apple products. I would absolutely love to have a Tesla Model 3 one day. Um, however, when it comes to comparing the CEOs of the company, now this is very much a personal opinion. I did say this at the start of the video. When I look at Tim Cook, he's very secluded. He likes to keep his business, let his business do the talking. He's not really too much on Twitter, shouting out anything too controversial. However, Elon Musk, on the other hand, has done some pretty controversial things um, on social media. And that just kind of gives me that hot headed approach that he has as a businessman. I do extremely respect Elon Musk. He's one of my favorite entrepreneurs, but when I'm investing money in it, I want to be just feeling safe and I want to know that he's not going to go out of his way um, completely unnecessarily to put the stock at risk. And that's happened a couple of times with Tesla. I love Tesla as a company. I love Elon Musk as an entrepreneur. <laughs> 
You know, what? Is that actually, that actually happened? I th of course it happened. I He's a massive inspiration to me, but when it comes to investing in him, I just don't have the confidence. And that's really how I try and explain the difference between putting the emotions about the product out of the way and looking more about the business and how it is actually run. Okay, so once I've found out everything I need to know about a company, I found out about the management structure. And if I am happy with how well it's being run, in my opinion, then that's when I move on to step two and this is the most analytical I get throughout the entire process and that's working out whether the stock is at a good value now this is actually a really tricky thing to do because basically what you are doing is trying to say to the stock market I think that this stock is worth less than what you are selling it at and um, this can obviously be met with so many different opinions and stuff like that and there is only really a couple of true ways to actually work out whether the stock is undervalue or overvalue. And the only way that I actually view this from a number and analytical point of view is looking at the price to earnings ratio of that actual stock. This is actually commonly known as the PE ratio and you'll be able to find it on any stock market investing app or anything like that. If you've got an Apple iPhone, you will see it in the company details when you click on a stock. And basically the price to earning ratio is the ratio for valuing a company that measures its current share price relative to its per share earnings, commonly known as an EPS. The price to earnings ratio is sometimes known as the price multiple or the earnings multiple and basically when I'm looking at this the general rule is that the lower the price to earnings ratio is typically the more value that there is in a stock however sometimes this doesn't actually matter because in some cases a lot of the time when a company has first started out they are not actually making profit in their first couple of years and this actually gives them a PE ratio of zero or it just doesn't exist at all um, um, Tesla is another really good example of this. Only in the last year or so, they have actually started turning over a profit. However, in the past five or six, seven years, their stock price has gone up massively and this is because of speculation and future growth and potential even though they are not turning over a profit so sometimes PE ratios can be a little bit misleading especially if you're buying stocks very much based on speculation for the future and this really does lead me into step number three and that is what I do I look at the future potential of a stock whether they have much room to grow in the market they are in the product that they have potentially got coming out in the future, the services that they will be releasing. And I have a really simple process of working out whether I think there is a good future of this product. I ask myself four questions. Number one is I will ask myself, is the company going to be relevant in 10 years from now? So um, will it even exist? Because obviously there has been companies that just disappear off the planet of the earth. A really good example of this is MySpace. The second question that I asked is, does the company have growth opportunities? The third question is what new products and services could that company release as I mentioned just a moment ago and then the fourth and final question that I asked myself is what new customers and different kind of demographics can that company attract so let's take a look at Apple once again and let's just ask ourselves those questions so question number one do I think Apple will exist in 10 years from now I personally think that in 10 years from now we will still all have iPhones I don't think there will be any companies come and trying to compete enough to even demolish Apple off the face of the earth um, in 10 years time I think that they are way too ahead in terms of the smartphone market once again this is just my opinion um, but even to the point you know I'm asking myself will they be just non-existent in 10 years and I'm pretty sure everyone can agree that won't be the case. Question number two is do I think Apple has the room to grow as a company and once again yes I do. Just looking at the iPhone market Apple has a share of 50% of the current total mobile phone smartphone market so there is definitely room to grow in there but we're talking about all the other sectors as well it's only just broken into the headphones game and it's only just broken into the services and streaming game as well so things like apple tv um, and icloud as well there's so much room for growth in those sectors of their business as well number three what new products could they release in the future um, well with apple they are always releasing new products we've just seen their own 
integrated MacBooks that they have released for the first time ever. They've just released the HomePod, which is kind of competing with the Amazon Alexa and the Sonos. Um, and then they've got other services that they've just released as well. Once again, talking about uh, Apple TV and their streaming service. Um, so there's so many new products that Apple are releasing. So once again, this is a massive tick for me when it comes to asking these questions. And then finally, when you look at what new customers can Apple attract in the future? Well, one thing that we've seen this year, I know it wasn't planned, but obviously with the coronavirus pandemic hitting, we've seen a lot of people staying in touch over technology. My Nan has personally gone out and got herself an iPad so she can Skype and FaceTime us. So uh, shout out Nan for that. So I do think that Apple can move much more into the older generation as well now, especially with technology becoming such a staple to our daily lives. So yeah, that's basically how I ask myself. It's just a checklist of four questions and then I go off and kind of ask myself if I can answer them about that company and if they all come back as yes, we are now looking onto a really good stock that I can invest in for the long term. Okay, so we've worked out everything we need to know about the company we've learned about the products and services they offer the management structure and whether we think there is a stable and solid thing in place we've worked out whether we think the stock is a good value in comparison to the market it's trading in we've worked out whether we think it's going to be good in the long run so 10 plus years we think it's still going to be around and growing the final thing that i like to do is just so much more of a check and that is just going back into the balance sheet of the stock and checking exactly how much money they have in the bank. And I think this is so important to do, especially even more so this year when we have suffered what is classed as a black swan event. Basically, this means an event that we have literally zero control over at all. Obviously, we know what we're talking about, what happened this year. But um, basically, the reason why I think this is so important is because I've seen so many companies go bankrupt this year because of their cash flow not being enough in the bank um, for reasons like this and um, when you look once again at a company like Apple in the second quarter of this year they had a hundred and ninety two billion dollars in their bank so if anything went wrong with Apple then they've got some cash in the bank to kind of see them through the kind of shitstorm that's going to be coming at them um, another really good example about this is Facebook Facebook is a stock that I personally am invested in and I invested in Facebook way before the Cambridge analytical scandal hit and what happened was they got sued massively I'll throw the um, amount exactly up on the screen but once again Facebook had so much money in their bank it barely took a dent out of what they actually had in the bank and how they could operate and things didn't really change from Facebook they actually invested a lot of their money in their bank about improving um, security features and stuff like that so um, I think it's really important that the company that you are investing in has that backup and has a really healthy balance in their bank account just for the kind of events like this and the ups and downs and you hopefully won't be seeing them going bankrupt any kind of time soon which for me as an investor makes me feel a lot more relaxed when it comes to just thinking about my investments on a day-to-day -day basis. One more thing actually before I move on about balance sheets is I almost forgot this and this is so important as well if a company has a lot of money in the bank then that makes them more open to be able to acquire other companies so when you look at companies like Apple, Facebook, Google, Coca-Cola they are constantly buying up smaller companies which is only going to increase their share price and a lot of the reasons why they actually buy the smaller companies is just to eliminate the competition that they have towards them so doing this pretty much ticks all of the other boxes that I've spoken about previously um, when it comes to the future of the company so um, that's another really good point to make when talking about having a nice healthy amount in the bank so you can acquire different companies and actually grow your business just by investing in other companies and yeah 
That's pretty much my four stage simple procedure that I take every time I'm looking into an individual stock and company. I know the videos ran on a little bit longer than what I expected, but the process is really simple when you break it down. Number one, you just need to find out about the company and the products and services they offer. Number two, you wanna find out whether you think it's a good value buy for the stock price it's currently at. Number three, you wanna think about the future of that product or service. Number four, you wanna just take a quick check of how much cash they have in the bank for safety reasons and potential um, acquiring of other companies. And it's as simple as that, guys. You can look deeper into the numbers if that's the kind of person you are. And the book I really recommend for this is a book that I've actually read. It's called The Intelligent Investor. And this pretty much teaches the principles of the world's most famous uh, investor of our time anyway, Warren Buffett, where it talks about working out values of stocks and the potentials of stocks in a much more in-depth process. If you did want to pick up this book, I will leave a link for it in the description below. And just one more link that I will leave in the description below. If you are watching this video and you haven't done any investing and you are interested in getting started, the best platform that I recommend heading over to to make your first ever investment is Trading21. It's a really beginner friendly app and it was the investment app that I first ever used when making my first investments into the stock. The link in my description, if you were to follow that and sign up and activate an account, you will actually receive a free share worth up to £100 and I will receive one as well because it is an affiliate link. So be quick to do that because I think there is a limited amount of shares that they offer and make sure you let me know what stock you do get if you do get one. So. Um, um, apart from that guys, the only other thing I'm going to ask you to do is smash that like button if you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.